I want to call the County of Placer Planning Commission for Thursday, September 9th, 2021 to order. If everyone could stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sue, could you call roll? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Mr. Cannon. Here. Thank you, Mr. DeMattei. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Woodward. Here. Mr. Herzog. Here. Mr. Sevison. Here. Mr. Haugie. Here. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. It's important for Placer County to conduct our business to ensure essential services for our citizens. We're doing everything we can to facilitate residents staying at home and physical distancing. We encourage the public to engage in the process. With that in mind, our public comment for this meeting will be offered in person and through a remote virtual process. Citizens who wish to comment today should be prepared to comment via the Zoom platform. To join virtually online, click on the link on the Planning Commission homepage. Please make sure your microphone is muted. You may also call in using our toll-free numbers to hear the meeting at 888-788-0099 or 877-853-5247. And please enter the webinar ID 977-2690-0602. Please press star six to mute yourself. If you would like to make a public comment virtually, please raise your hand with the hand icon at the bottom of the page. If you are calling in, please press star nine to raise your hand. Please be prepared to speak at the time I open the public comment for the specific item you would like to address, which may include public comment for matters not included on the agenda, a consent item, or a timed item. If attending in person today, we kindly request that once you have commented on your item, return to your seat or leave the hearing room from the exit-only door to accommodate for physical distancing and allowing for others to provide in-person public comment. Each commenter is entitled to three minutes to comment. Thank you for your patience as we work to preserve the safety and health of all meeting participants and ensure that each citizen who wishes to comment has the opportunity to do so. At this time, uh, EJ, if you could give us an update uh, on the planning director's report. Uh, certainly. Thank you, Chairman, members of the commission. EJ Valdi with the Planning Service Division. Can you hear me? It seems a little... Okay. All right. How about now? Better. So anyway, I think I'm going to start this morning uh, with a couple of staffing announcements uh, behind me is uh, Judy Tishi. I'll have Judy stand up just briefly. Uh, we recently hired her as an administrative technician for the Planning Services Division, uh, and we'll be she'll be providing support to the uh, my position, the planning director, uh, also providing support uh, to the rest of our uh, uh, planning division. Uh, Judy has worked for the county before uh, for HHS, uh, did a short tenure with a, another jurisdiction, but but she uh, has found the, uh, the the right path back and is here at the county. So we're happy to have her, and I want to welcome Judy. So thank you. And then uh, I would also like to announce George. I'm going to have George stand up. <laughs> <laughs> so George uh, was recently promoted to planning manager. Uh, George uh, will remain the acting zoning administrator for the county, but will also oversee the code compliance programs, which is code compliance, uh, hazardous vegetation abatement, and then also the cannabis unit. Uh, so anyway, so he may also fill in uh, from time to time uh, here at the Planning Commission as well. So congratulations, George, uh, in your new uh, roles and responsibilities. <laughs> awesome. Uh, moving on to other items, Council has informed me that uh, the Governor's executive orders regarding public meetings is set to expire the end of this month. So, uh, and jump in, Clayton, if I misstate something here, because and it will probably all change by the time we're out of this meeting anyway, but uh, starting with the October Planning Commission meetings, Planning Commissioners will need to appear in person. Uh, and if it's publicly, uh, or if, if it's in another location, there's got to be a public notice uh, where you are appearing from, an agenda has to be posted, and I believe that location also has to be available for the public to attend as well. 
Oh, nice job. You got it right. All right. Uh, and then the quorum of the planning commissioners must be present in locations within the boundary of the county. Oh. Uh, members of the public must be able to observe the meeting and offer public comment at a physical location. Uh, the county can all offer Zoom, so we will continue to do so. I think that's been uh, great. Allows for a greater participation in our meetings. Uh, and then uh, pending any changes in the next few weeks or any new uh, order signed, we'll, of course, update you. Any questions on that? All right. Uh, so the upcoming planning ske commission schedule. September 23rd, we're going to cancel that meeting. But we're certainly going to try to make up for it in October. So in October, uh, and on your consent agenda day, there is a request for two special meetings. So October 7th would be a new meeting date. And we're hoping to bring forward the housing related code amendments, uh, the health and safety element update, and then there's some planning items as well on October 7th. So that, that could very well be a full day. The uh, next meeting, October 14th, that's a regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, that's when our advisory re redistricting commission, which is uh, your commission, uh, will hear an item that day, and we'll have planning items on that day as well. Uh, the next regularly scheduled meeting, October 28th, uh, we anticipate to hold that meeting. And then the second special meeting uh, would be November 4th, uh, and our hope would be that that is just for the advisory redistricting commission. Uh, and we hope to have that uh, as an evening meeting with just that one item on it. I know I ran through those dates fast, so. Um. All right, okay. so if there aren't any questions on those dates, uh, just touching on board meetings real quick. We haven't had any planning items considered by the board since we last met. Uh, we do have a couple upcoming items. Uh, the Kim CUP modification appeal is scheduled for September 14th, next Tuesday. And then uh, the Placer Vineyard Specific Plan Property 1B amendments, I believe, is scheduled for September 28th. All right. That concludes my report. Any questions of the commission of uh, EJ? Oh. Thank you, EJ. Yep. I will now open the public comment for any matters not on the Planning Commission agenda. Uh, is there anyone here in the auditorium who would like to speak? And Sue, is there anyone online who would like to speak? What's that? No. All right. With no other comment, public comment for matters not on the agenda is closed. We will now move on to the consent agenda. Would any commissioners like to remove an item from the consent agenda? Seeing none, does anyone from the public want to remove an item from the consent agenda? Morning, Commissioners. Morning. Wayne Nader, good to see all of you again. Uh, I'd like to remove item B for discussion. All right. And Sue, is there anyone online? Ooh. All right. All right, so is that up to the commission to, to make that choice then, or is we just remove it and have that discussion? So, right, that item would be removed. Uh, at this point, the commission can make a motion on the remaining consent items. If All they, right, so is there a motion like on the remaining consent items? We have a first. Second. And a second. Sue, roll call. I believe I heard, well, Mr. Sevison was the first. Was that Mr. Woodward with the second? Uh, Herzog. Herzog, thank you. Then a vote from Mr. Cannon, please. Yes. Mr. DeMattei? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Woodward? Yes. Mr. Herzog? Yes. Mr. Sevison? Yes. Mr. Hauge? Yes. Thank you. All right. So the item uh, B has been uh, placed on the agenda. So at this point in time, um, we're going to be hearing that item. Um, staff, is there a report on that? And I believe that's the special meetings. So we can do a couple things here. I think, uh, I don't know who's best to talk to the redistricting item. We can have Nikki come up to talk about the meetings and why one was a day meeting and one was an evening meeting. Thank you. 
Good morning, Good morning. Uh, Chair, members of the Commission, Nikki Stregan with your Planning Services Division. Um, so the, the two items are the, the two dates that are set forth as advisory redistricting commission meetings um, and as was presented to the Board of Supervisors last August 31st um, as far as timeline and an outreach update are October 14th, which is held during regular, um, regular commission time, and then November 4th. Uh, and that meeting, by law, we actually have to have one of our advisory redistricting commission meetings either um, on a Saturday, a Sunday, or a weekday after 6 p.m. And so uh, that November 4th meeting we anticipate occurring uh, in the evening. Um, uh, staff has done, uh, as was presented to the board, as I mentioned last Tuesday, um, two Tuesdays ago, August 31st. I'll stick with August 31st since my... My weeks are all blending together, but um, uh, we presented the, that we have done some sub-regional community outreach meetings already. All of those have occurred in the evening, um, but as mentioned, we anticipate holding your next two advisory redistricting commission meetings, one during your normal time and then the other in the evening. A question? Yes. Did you say the special meeting in October is going to be on the 14th or the 7th? <coughs> Uh, so the special meeting is November 4th. That's an addition. October 14th is one of your regularly scheduled commission meetings. Okay. I think our agenda today says it's on the 7th. But but there's also one on the 7th. Huh? There's a meeting on the 7th, there's a meeting on the 14th, a meeting on the 28th, and then November the 4th. I believe that that's what you said. Correct. Today. So the consent agenda is asking for two special meetings, one October 7th, where there are no redistricting uh, items scheduled, and then the November 4th. Okay, so I just want to clarify. I think I heard you say October 14th, and it's yep. actually October 7th. Is that correct? So, so there's, two, there's two redistricting meetings. One is scheduled for October 14th, which is a regularly scheduled meeting. And then we're asking you to add another meeting on November 4th for the second redistricting meeting. Okay, I'm still confused because when I'm reading item okay. B here, it says October 7th. October 7th is a special meeting for the Planning Commission items, and I believe that Correct. will be... Yeah, so on October items. 7th, we're doing the housing-related code amendments, uh, the health and safety element, and some other planning items on that agenda. Right. Correct. So, okay. So the redistricting is on October 14th. Correct. October 7th is just a, a special meeting for several other items. Correct. Correct. Okay. Got it. Thank you. And they're expecting that all day. Huh? That's t expected to be all day long. Okay. So snacks will be served, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Any other questions of the Commission of Nikki? If Thank you, Nikki. Uh, so at this time, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? Mr. Nader. Again, good morning, uh, Wayne Nader. Um, the reason I asked this item be uh, pulled uh, is I wanted to first confirm, and I know Nikki and DJ have already done that, that the meeting in November is going to be in the evening. But what I'd like to uh, compel you as uh, the advisory for the redistricting, uh, you are the, revise, uh, the advisory commission for that, on the, the one in October, um, I'd really like to see that also in an evening meeting. I think, um, and I'll give you the reasons why. And because it's supposed to be a blended meeting, because you're going to have planning issues and then you'll deal with the redistricting uh, as a separate commission uh, meeting, the um, uh, thing that I would suggest for that day is maybe to meet at 4 o'clock or whatever, whenever you can get those, those planning issues out of the way, and then at 5 o'clock you have the, uh, the advisory for the redistricting. Uh, as Nikki mentioned, there's been many meetings, multiple meetings throughout the county that she and Jane have been doing to uh, reach out to um, the communities to let them know what the procedure and the process is. But they have not had the data from the state to actually start doing the work. Well, that is now starting to come out. 
and the staff will start to put together maps or proposed maps of how to uh, move that the population numbers around so that as you know it has to be equal in each of the districts uh, so in my mind these two meetings that are coming up are where <coughs> the rubber really meets the road this is where the public is really going to start to see what's coming what's coming or what's being proposed for the board and the, it, as you know this is a really compressed because of the COVID situation this information is coming very late but it has to be done by the end of the year or I think in the middle of December so it's very compressed and so there would probably be normally more public meetings but uh, this is going to the board on November 30th so uh, I would really ask you to consider having that meeting in October in a late afternoon and then have the other part in the evening and I'm assuming both those meetings would be zoom uh, available to people because I'm going to get the word out uh, people need to be involved this is it uh, only happens every 10 years I mean you all know that and this is a very critical thing for the future of the county as to how people are represented and who's representing you so they need to weigh in so I appreciate your consideration of that all right thank you are there any other comments okay let's bring it back to the Commission for discussion any discussion well I think through this discussion and get decisions made, I think it would be really helpful if our wonderful clerk could you send us a printout of exactly what we have to, so I can put it at my desk at home and know where I'm supposed to be at what day and what time. Would that be possible? I think it would be helpful for everyone to have that one sheet of dates and the items and and because it's different times in different places and I think all that needs to be documented so that I'll, otherwise I'll still be driving over Donner Summit when it's, when it's all over <laughs> thank you <All> right. <clears throat> any discussion about moving the meeting back to the evening on the 14th of October I, I'm comfortable with that if, if you all want to do it um, okay yeah I'm I mean I with a suggestion I like I like the idea I think uh, getting more participation earlier might help us identify the issues that are out there that we may not be aware of and having more time to give feedback and more participation I think could help inform the process even better rather than the second meeting being in the evening and not having another opportunity I like actually if we only had one I'd like to have the evening meeting first anyway and so I'm comfortable with that. Um, I could commit to being here in the evening that date I checked. Uh, I, I like that idea. Unless it's snowing. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope. Yeah, right. Any other comments from the commission? Is it October 7th <laughs> or October 14th? Say that again. And Would it be the October 7th special hearing date meeting for this? No, Would the it be the evening or the 14th? I did not, uh, I did not hear. What's that? Yeah, my mic is on. Yeah, October 14th would be the hearing on the redistricting, and the recommendation is to start that in the evening. Okay, thank you. And your your thoughts? I, I'm good with the evening. I, if it okay. brings more people um, to be able to attend who can't get off work early, then um, you know that's why we're here for them. So I could be here. That's not a problem. All right. Sam, your thoughts? I think for all the reasons that have been outlined by my colleagues and uh, the public speaker, Mr. Nader, I think it is a, an excellent opportunity to get to reach more people on such a um, an important issue as this. So I'm all in favor, and I have no problem with all the dates as proposed. All right. I have one question for for council. I know uh, if the one evening meeting has to be at 6 p.m. or later. Does this meeting, if the commission so desires to do an evening meeting on October 14th, does that also have to be 6 p.m. or later, or, or could that be at 5? Yeah, so the requirement is one meeting after 6 p.m. Okay. Um, so that means any additional meetings wouldn't need to be after 6 p.m. Um, I, I did hear some comments about potentially this being an evening meeting and the second one not being an evening meeting. Um, I guess if that were still in play, then I would suggest this first meeting be at 6 p.m. just to make sure that we've completed that requirement, and that would provide flexibility for the second meeting if, in fact, there is kind of 
thoughts along that line. <clears throat> Any thoughts on that? I, I know myself, I, I kind of like the idea of two evening meetings to, to cover the public, so I, I can do that. I would so, agree, two evening meetings. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, we're really talking about what, what the item B is. That is correct. Doesn't talk about the 14th. And so you have really two decisions going here at the same time. We're talking about the October 14th meeting uh, being an evening meeting. And the item in the consent agenda is October 7th. So there's two things going on. Do you know what I mean? Well, the. Which is part of it. So. Well, the issue, I think, is if we make a decision to change the 14th, it could affect November 4th. So I think it, it is related, especially if one has to be in the evening. Um, and if we're adjusting this document, I, I think it's appropriate for us to. And October 14th is listed on this document that we're asking to modify. So the whole document is, is being requested to be modified. So I don't know. I, I feel Okay. Like it's just making topic. sure that we're. Yeah, and I uh, just weigh into. I believe it is within your purview to modify the the timing of the October fourteenth meeting during this action, if you so choose to do so. Do you need an action then from the? Com I guess you need a motion on this. Right, we would need a m motion on whatever the commission decides. Uh, the okay. the item being brought forth is approval of the the dates and times that are on the sheet provided. But uh, if there is a motion that would alter that, that would now would be the time to make that. And one other note. So on t on October 14th, if uh, the commission decides to do it at 6 p.m., because there will be other items, uh, we may want to start that meeting earlier, but we would have that redistricting right. item at 6 p.m. Okay. So just be aware of that. I think yes. it would be helpful if she could print this whole thing out as we discussed it in final so that I have it on my desk and I can look at it. <laughs> I, I think all of us, once this is adopted, then... So, is there a motion? Then? She's the uh, only one that knows what's going on here. I know. <laughs> Take a stab at a motion. Uh, I think for the consent agenda item B, which was pulled, I'd like to make a motion that we approve it with a modification or addition of requiring that October 4th be an evening meeting. Um, 14th. 14th. What did I say? 4th. I just wanted to make sure. October 14th. Yes. Right. Will be an evening meeting. Whatever, scratch whatever I said before. <laughs> I but October 14th uh, being the evening meeting, which we didn't de declare a time at all, but that's I'm okay with that. Okay. Starting at 6, I think they talked about, didn't they? They did, or okay. earlier. No. So the actual meeting will start earlier, but the item uh, for redistricting, we will make sure it's 6. Right. Okay. All right. At 6 o'clock. Or okay. later. <clears throat> And for purposes Second. of this motion, too, uh, the sheet doesn't set forth the time, so staff can set those times based right. on what's required. Second. I'll, sec I'll second the motion. All right. We have a first and two seconds. I think Mr. Woodward beat you slightly. <laughs> oh, <so>. all right. <laughs> my, my apologies. Not a problem. Uh, Sue, call, roll, roll, call, please. Okay. I have a first from Mr. Herzog, a second from Mr. Woodward. So a vote from Mr. Cannon, please. Yes. Mr. DiMatteo. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Woodward. Yes. Mr. Herzog. Yes. Mr. Sevison. Yes. Mr. Haugie. Yes. Thank you. We are now moving on to the first timed item, the Bickford Ranch Specific Plan, Second Amendment to the Corrected, Amended, and Restated Development Agreement to Clarify Park CFD Obligations. Members of the public may now raise their hands, press star nine if you're calling in, to begin queuing in for public comment on this item which will not begin until the item presentation is complete. Michelle Kingsbury, uh, Petra, Principal Management Analyst, will be presenting the item. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning, uh, Commissioners. Again, Michelle Kingsbury, Analyst with CEDRA. Um, as you noted, the item before you today is to consider a second amendment to the 2015 Bickford Ranch Specific Plan Corrected, Amended, and Restated Development Agreement. As you're aware, the Bickford Ranch Specific Plan plans for 1,890 residential units near Sierra College Boulevard and Highway 193 and unincorporated Placer County. In 2015, the county approved amendments to the specific plan as well as a fully incomplete amendment to the development agreement, 
which we commonly refer to as the 2015 DA. In February of 2021 of this year, your commission did approve the first amendment to the 2015 DA, which was again technical amendments to clarify the use of zones of benefit reserves upon dissolution and to pro it provided for language which re required sufficient revenues to be in place to maintain park facilities at the time of acceptance. This item before you today is another technical amendment to the development agreement. Um, as this project is proceeding forward, uh, we noticed in the development agreement and through negotiations related to CFD formations that we just needed, again, a couple more tweaks or technical amendments to the development agreement. I will note um, for anybody in the audience, it's important to note that these actions requested of you today, they do not change the project description. They don't change the number of residential units proposed in the specific plan, does not change any mitigation measures, nor does it increase any environmental impacts. These are really simply a few technical amendments to provide some clarity um, related to the 2015 DA. And I'll go through them very quickly. I'd also like to introduce um, Andy Fisher, our Parks Administrator, who's here available to answer any technical questions related to any of the proposed amendments on the park side. And I believe Rob Aragon from the Bigford Ranch Specific Plan uh, Development Group is um, available via phone as well if you have questions for him. So the first proposed amendment, um, we've tried to highlight in yellow to make it easier to follow through um, the first proposed amendment to the 2015 DA. And that's simply to add a, a new fire service fee into section 2.7.6, which is the specific plan fees section. Uh, this section on the specific plan fees really is what it describes. They're fees specific to the specific plan. They're typically negotiated fees um, that are um, usually not seen in other developments or other specific plan areas. And this amendment will just add um, the fire service fee to that. This section is just a continuation of section 2.7.6 where we don't propose any amendments. So we'll get on to what is this new fee. Uh, the new fire service fee we're proposing to add a new section would be section 3.5.3, which would add an additional $300 per uh, fee per building permit within the Bickford Ranch specific plan. And the purpose of this new fee would to be to provide additional funding for the operations and maintenance of the fire services and facilities that support the project. This is a negotiated fee that resulted from our negotiations with the project team um, through formation um, and the budgets related to providing the fire services within Bickford. Um, we're looking at an October 12th board hearing to proceed forward where we'll start the formation of the CFDs and this negotiation of this additional fee resulted from those CFD negotiations. Uh, this new fee is supported by both our county executive office and our CAL FIRE partners who were with us when we negotiated this fee, as well as the Bickford team themselves. Uh, the other amendments or remaining amendments deal with uh, just tweaking some of the twigger, trigger, twiggers, triggers associated with uh, phase one and phase two of the parks um, and one of the exhibits. Um, they're very technical, and again, Andy is here to answer any questions that you may have, but I'll quickly go through them too. Uh, the first tweak is to section 3.4.3.2, and really just a couple of things I'd like to highlight. Um, as noted in the, uh, the PowerPoint and in your package, just adding that clarification that there in the first paragraph there are five phases. Under Bigford Ranch Park Phase 1, uh, we've provided some clarification uh, and language as to when submittal um, and construction drawings and submittals um, would be due. And this is pursuant to just kind of working through as the project is proceeding forward, making sure that triggers align with kind of the development process and parks um, come online um, when they need to. Uh, continuation of section 3.4.3.2, the next uh, change is very minor in nature. Under Bickford Ranch Park Phase 2, uh, in that same section, again, there are some tweaks uh, to these sections commensurate with just negotiating and, and as we're looking at the construction process proceeding forward to make sure it's clear when improvement plans uh, and construction drawings and construction to begin uh, for this phase. And finally, um, the last uh, tweak or, or proposed modification relates to an exhibit, Exhibit M within the development agreement. Exhibit M uh, outlined park phasing as well as concept drawings and things of that nature within the development agreement. And there's just a couple of little 
minor modifications that are needed. Under Bigford Ranch Park Phase 1, I would like to point out in, um, in the PowerPoint slide that you see the first bullet point was incorrect. Excuse me. The first bullet point was incorrect, and I'd like to read into the record just to make sure um, that bullet point aligns with what's included within your package as well as the proposed amendments. The first bullet point should read, uh, prepare construction drawing slash improvement plans for port that portion of Park Site North, the Bickford Ranch Road, which in parentheses should be the equestrian staging area on PR-2, end of parentheses, and south of Bickford Ranch Road, parentheses on, par on parcel PR-1, in accordance with the timing noted in section 3.4.3.2. Again, the, the, the correct bird bridge is noted within your package as well as the exhibit, which is the proposed development agreement amendment. There are no proposed changes to bullet points two and three under that section. And under Bickford Ranch Park phase two section, there's just one minor clarification that instead of PR-1, it should be PR-2. Otherwise, again, I apologize for not uh, catching that correction. These technical changes really are technical in nature. They do not propose any changes to the project descriptions, nor the residential units, nor do they have any additional environmental impacts. So with that, that would conclude my presentation. We're, Andy and I are happy to answer any questions you may have, or we can proceed toward the recommendations. Does the commission have questions on staff? I have, a, I have one. I'm pleased to see the fire fee, actually. I know the stressor it can place on, on the community. Is, is the long-term plan for, for that area to have their own facility and, okay. That is correct. So within the Bickford Ranch specific plan at the entry point, I believe off Lower Ranch Road, there'll be a new fire facility to be constructed there that would serve the development as round. Yes. Okay. Other questions, Mr. Woodward? No. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. At this time, does the applicant have anything to say? Uh, no comments, just to the extent that there's any uh, questions, happy to try and answer them, but no comments at the moment. So thank you and thanks staff for their uh, processing of this document. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are there any persons in the auditorium who would like to speak? And Sue, are there any persons online? No. Okay. So we're going to close. We open the public comment period. Now it's closed and bring it back to the commission for uh, discussion and motion. Any discussion? And therefore, do we have a motion? I'll move that uh, we make the recommendation uh, of approval <coughs> to the Board of Supervisors that we determine that the Bickford Ranch specific plan second amendment to the corrected amendment and restated development agreement is consistent with the previously certified final environmental impact report, SCH number 199808273, and subsequent addendums that it meets the criteria in Public Resources Code sections 21166 and CEQA guidelines sections 15162 based on the findings and contained or findings contained in the staff report. Second. We have a first and a second. Roll call, please. I have a first from Mr. Herzog, a second from Mr. Sevison. So vote for Mr. Cannon, please. Yes. Mr. DeMattei? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Woodward? Yes. Mr. Herzog? Yes. Mr. Sevison? Yes. Mr. Hauge? Yes. Thank you. I'd like to further move that we recommend to the Board of Supervisors approval uh, adopt an ordinance approving the second amendment to the corrected amended and restated development agreement based on the findings contained in the staff report. Second. We have a first and a second. Roll call, please, sir. That's a first from Mr. Herzog and a second from Mr. Sevison. A vote from Mr. Cannon, please. Yes. Mr. DeMattei? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Woodward? Yes. Mr. Herzog? Yes. Mr. Sevison? Yes. Mr. Hauge? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are now moving on to our second timed item, the Rue Firearms Weapons Manufacturing Conditional Use Permit. Members of the public may now raise their hands. 
uh, press star nine if you're calling in to begin queuing in for public comment on this item, which will not begin until the item presentation is complete. Kelly K Kenninger Cecil, senior planner, will be presenting this item. Helps if I have the microphone on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Callie Kedinger Cecil of the Planning Services Division. The item before you this morning is a request for a conditional use permit for the operation of a federal firearms license for the manufacture and sale of small arms and ammunition from an existing warehouse and building and building offices. Sorry. Uh, the project site is located in unincorporated Western Placer County at 9815 Antelope Road, immediately north of the county boundary, it's shown here outlined in orange. The 11 acre project site is developed with two offices, a 5,000 square foot carport, I mean storage and warehouse building, a carport, parking and circulation areas, and vehicle storage areas. The site is used for outdoor vehicle storage and an equipment repair shop for two businesses named Rue Equipment Inc. and Roseville Storage. Existing development is located at the west and eastern portions of the project site. And the project site is bisected through the center by a tributary to Dry Creek. The site is accessed by an existing encroachment from Antelope Road. And existing surrounding uses include um, a subdivision to the southwest, industrial uses to the east, and undeveloped properties to the north and west. As noted, the Sacramento County boundary is pretty close to the project site to the south. The site is owned industrial, combining use permit, combining design corridor, and open space. Parcels to the north and west are zoned industrial park, combining design corridor, and open space, and parcels to the south and west are under the same zoning designation as the project site. As mentioned, the applicant is requesting approval of a conditional use permit for the operation of a federal firearms license, or FFL, to prototype manufacture and sell small arms. The business would operate from the existing storage office and buildings as shown here in yellow, and no new structures are proposed for the use. Business operations include manufacturing and sales. Manufacturing would occur Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. within the existing shop. Manufacturing activities include gunsmithing, prototyping, um, in ammunition reloading. Approximately 50 firearms and about 250 pounds of ammunition would be produced annually. And a bullet trap and chronograph would also be used indoors by employees only to <coughs> test firearms and ammunition. I've included some photos of what a chronograph looks like as well as a bullet trap. A chronograph is a piece of equipment that is used to measure and calibrate how quickly um, ammunition is shot through a gun. And a bullet trap is exactly that. It's, it's a, mechani or a piece of equipment that actually captures the bullets. Sales would be appointment only, um, <laughs> primarily through the internet. Uh, On-site sales would, would be limited to appointment only, and no more than two in-person uh, in sales are anticipated per week. All sales would occur from the existing office, and no signage or advertising is proposed. The site has security measures in place, including perimeter fencing with barbed wire, which you can see here. There's a locked gate. The site has an extensive um, monitored alarm system and motion detecting camera system, as well as commercial grade fireproof cabinets for the guns and ammunition. FFLs require licensing and, in and inspections at the federal, state, and local levels. To that end, the applicant has received an FFL from the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms has completed Certificate of Eligibility Background Checks from the California Department of Justice, is required to obtain a local firearms dealer license from the County Sheriff's Office, and must also obtain a business license and conditional use permit from the county. The purpose of these licenses is to ensure that people who are licensed to manufacture and sell firearms have completed all necessary background checks to register the location of these sales and activities for state and local firearm purposes. The manufacture of firearms is an allowable use in the industrial zone district with approval of a conditional use permit. The purpose of a conditional use permit is to allow county staff and decision makers to review the project to determine if any problems may occur, to provide the public an opportunity to review the project and express their concerns in a public hearing, 
and to work with the project applicant to adjust the project through conditions of approval to solve any potential issues. Common issues associated with firearms manufacturing includes noise, land use compatibility, and safety and security. The project would be conditioned to address these issues, including restricting firearms testing to employees and indoors only, ensuring hours of operation do not occur outside normal business hours, and obtaining licensing and providing proof of license information for staff verification. No new structures are proposed for this use, and the project has adequate parking and circulation available on site. The use is consistent with the industrial zoning, applicable provisions of the Placer County Zoning Ordinance, and would be conditioned to limit potential effects of the project to neighboring properties. This use is also consistent with the existing nature of the surrounding area. This project was presented at the July 21st, 2021 West Placer MAC meeting. At that meeting, uh, no one from the public spoke to the project, but the MAC members did have some questions about the applicant's background and express support for the use. The MAC voted unanimously 5-0 to zero, to recommend that your Planning Commission approve the proposed conditional use permit. The Development Review Committee recommends the Planning Commission take the following actions. The first is to find the project is categorically exempt from environmental review per the California Environmental Quality Act and Placer County Environmental Review Ordinance per Class 1 existing facilities and to approve the conditional use permit subject to the conditions of approval and supported by the findings contained in the staff report. This concludes my presentation, and I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Does the commission have questions of staff? I have one. Going back, what is that federal license for? Now, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, that, that federal license is issued by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. And the purpose of that license is to uh, license people who are able to sell firearms. They go through an extensive background check process. Um, and that uh, permit is uh, kept on file by the sheriff's office so that they know that they have the appropriate licensing. And they are also aware of the location for any inspection purposes. Right. And if you have further finer detailed questions about the ATF process, I'm sure the applicant can speak to that right. as well. Thank you. Question? Go yeah. ahead. Um, I guess I, oh, we have one here first. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I think it just seems contradictory to me, so I just need a clarification. The, the statement of the manufacturing of non-explosive weapons and then talk about missiles, but is that because they're not armed or is that, how does that go together? So they're, they're manufacturing small ammunition and per the, the definition that's noted in the zoning ordinance, that's that's part of what the manufacturer is. Because it says you can't, they can construct missiles, and, and so that seems different. I mean, those explode. They are not proposing to construct missiles. They're, they're proposing, they're, they're not proposing to manufacture missiles. Okay. They're, they're proposing to manufacture small arms. Not, not, I mean, okay. does that make sense? Yeah, I'm just asking because it lists it in here as one of the options to be able to to build, and I was wondering why maybe a missile would not be an explosive item, but um, maybe that's because it's not armed. I just wasn't sure if we had clarity on that. There is another um, land use designation for manufacture of missiles, and that's not what this project is proposing. Okay, thanks. Yeah. You had a question? Oh, I guess just a clarification. I, I see it now. I understand it, but... I noticed that there's a 36-month uh, period in which that expires on uh, September 9th. And I guess the word unless means that the uh, applicant has to provide all the permits and business licenses and everything required by that time that's in correct. order for the permit to continue. So that's just, uh, I guess, clarification for my own mind. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other commissioner questions? Hearing none, thank you. Uh, applicant, uh, your opportunity to uh, speak to the commission. Is he a big shot? <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, my name is Doug Rowe. I am the uh, applicant, and I already run three other businesses in the same complex and area. Um, been conducting my heavy equipment repair business since uh, 2089 or, or one, uh, 1989 
and I've been in Placer County since about 1990 doing business. So, um, and then I've had the property for 20 years now. So, heavy equipment is just getting too hard for me to do, but I still have other employees doing it. Nice meeting. Um, do you have any? Questions. Any questions of the commission? I don't see any. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So at this time, we'll open up the public hearing for public comments. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? And, Sue, do we have anyone online? If no one wants to speak, then we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for discussion and motion. Mr. Woodward. I, I have no comments. I'm okay. ready to make a motion. That would be fine. We'll take it. Um, I move that the planning... I'm sorry. No, go no ahead. Comments? Go okay. Ahead. I move that the Planning Commission find that the project is categorically exempt from review Excuse under me. CEQA. Sorry. We do have a late raised hand. Oh, we do have a raised hand. A late raised hand. Okay. So if we could hold off on sure, the motion. No so at this time, I'm going to open the public comment period again. And Sue, would you let them in? Mr. Brar, you have three minutes. Sure. Hi, my name is Steve Brar. Um, I own the property to the north of Mr. Rue's property. Um, and I just want to say, I, you know, I'm supportive of, of the approval of this. I just had one question, maybe, for Mr. Rue. Um, uh, regarding the noise, um, you know, and, and testing of the firearms, uh, what, what are, you know, what can we expect in terms of, like, you know, if there were gunshots being heard throughout the day by the residential uses that are in antelope and also the future proposed uses surrounding the property. I'm just curious if, if you think that there will be noise outside of the building or if it'll be mitigated. You know, I don't want to have neighbors hearing gunshots and calling the services of the county when they're not necessary. So that's my question, but I am supportive of, of, of this use. Thank you. Um, at this time, if you would like to respond, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, good morning, Steve. Um, um, the firearms testing will be indoors. It will not, I don't know the decibel level, but it will be less noisy than um, the current heavy equipment repair, like when we change tires uh, using the impact guns outside. Um, It'll probably be equivalent to that noise, and it'll be during uh, regular business hours and Saturday, and it will not be very often. Um, so I I don't know if that answers your question, but it'll be the about the sound of a impact gun going off, uh, changing tires. All right. Thank you. Sue, are there any other public comments? I, um, commissioners, I did just want to take this opportunity to note that on page four of the staff report, uh, noise is discussed, and it's noted that um, all business operations would occur within an existing industrial building where heavy equipment maintenance and repair is already permitted and conducted. The noise generated from the existing equipment repair business would exceed noise generated from weapons manufacturing, including in terms of frequency of occurrence as the business owner intends to limit the weapons manufacturing to a small-scale endeavor. Having said that, if, if there are noise issues, of course, someone could always um, contact code enforcement if that does, in fact, become an issue. I just right. wanted to add. Well, thank you so much. appreciate it. All right. Any All right yeah, thank you. Uh, Okay. Any other public comment? All right. No. In that case, we will close the public comment period again mm -hmm. and bring it back for discussion and motion. So Mr. Woodward, I believe you're ready to make sure. a motion. Um, I move that the Planning Commission find that the project is categorically exempt from review under CEQA pursuant to the provisions of Section 15301 of the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines and Section 18.36.030 of the Placer County Environmental Review Ordinance. 
parentheses existing facilities. Okay. We have a first and a second. Sue, if you could call yes. roll. Yes, the first from Mr. Woodward, second from Mr. Sevison. A vote for Mr. Cannon, please. Yes. Mr. DeMattei? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Woodward? Yes. Mr. Herzog? Yes. Mr. Sevison? Yes. Mr. Hauge? Yes. Thank you. I further move that the Planning Commission approve the conditional use permit subject to the conditions of approval and supported by the findings contained in the staff report. We have a first and a second. Roll call, please. First from Mr. Woodward, second from Mr. Sevison. A vote from Mr. Cannon, please. Yes. Mr. DeMattei? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Woodward? Yes. Mr. Herzog? Yes. Mr. Sevison? Yes. Mr. Hauge? Yes. Thank you. The decision of the Planning Commission may be appealed by anyone who appeared at today's hearing and provided comment or anyone that submitted written comments on this item. An appeal must be filed within 10 days of today's date and shall be accompanied by a filing fee of $619. With that, this meeting of the Planning Commission is adjourned. Thank you.